Hey y'all, it's PD here from the Myrtle Beach Bible Bank. Woo! <laughs> it's Thanksgiving Day, y'all. It's my favorite day. Woo! One of my favorite days, at least. Such joy on this day, you know? But it hasn't always been that way for me. And it isn't that way for everyone, really. You know, as I speak this word from the Lord, I hope today that if you are struggling with joy and thankfulness, that maybe I can offer you some encouragement and some motivation for living a thankful lifestyle. I went through a very lengthy, dark, and rough time in my life at one point, some years back. Uh, I was following some pretty deep losses. Uh, I was feeling pretty down. And I was, I was only focused on the negatives that were, you know, around me. One day, though, I discovered a challenge. It was called 100 Days of Happy. And uh, for 100 days, I had to find one thing every day that made me happy and send it to a few friends. Back then, it was like email and texting pictures. Nowadays, you just go on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or Snapchat or whatever and post something. But it was easy to take pictures when I was out and I was doing fun things or hanging out with my friends, uh, but I couldn't seem to find things to make me happy as easily on normal days when I was like inside the house by myself. So, so I started to pick random things like uh, eating a good meal or just getting to go outside and enjoy the weather, right? So as I forced myself to, to pick out these random things and, and document them, uh, finding you know something that made me happy, it started to get easier really. And after a while, it was like it was no longer forced or random. I just felt happier. And this similar practice, it can be used when thinking about what we are thankful for in our lives that God's provided, right? So there's so many reasons to give God thanks. Hallelujah, amen. We really should try to make an effort and, and show gratitude for the things that we have received from Him. You know, and maybe you currently feel like I felt during that time in my life. And maybe you're, you're having a rough time uh, with this season of life. But I want to help you. I want to help you cultivate a practice of giving thanks to God. Hallelujah. So, so let's do this. Uh, number one, we can be thankful for our relationship with God. So while Christianity has guiding principles and, and commandments that we should live by, it's not about all that we can do on our own, but what we can do with God, right? Christianity is the only faith that's about what God did to get to you, okay? Christ's crucifixion and his resurrection were both necessary to save us from sin and death. And Jesus' death and resurrection made a way for us to have a relationship with God. So God did this because he loves us and he wants a relationship with us, y'all. He knew that we would continue to rebel against him and that we, we, we could never be perfect, but he still made a way for us to have a relationship with him. We really should give thanks to God for this. It's an amazing gift. Romans 8 uh, verse 38 to 39 says this, for neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things uh, present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus you know our Lord next thing though is that we can be thankful for everlasting life when God resurrected Jesus from the grave he gave us the opportunity to have everlasting life Christ's sacrifice is important but his resurrection is also central to our salvation hallelujah first Corinthians 15 17 tells us and if Christ has not been raised your faith is fuller you are still in your sins okay Christ's crucifixion and resurrection were both necessary to save us from sin and death don't forget that number three is that we can be thankful because of God's grace and his forgiveness we deserve the death that Jesus suffered on our behalf but because of his sacrifice, we have been forgiven, hallelujah. Through God's grace, 
We are redeemed, y'all, and we are freed from the grip of sin on our lives. We see this in Ephesians 1, 7, where it says, uh, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. Okay, so number four, we can be thankful because of God's creation. No matter where you are in the world or, or what you're going through, you can appreciate God's creation. The birds in the sky, the many different flowers, and trees, and landscapes. Not only, not only can you appreciate His creation, but you can also appreciate the fact that God made you and me and us co-rulers of creation. He loves us so much. He entrusted us to care for and protect his creation. Whew. We are reminded of this truth, y'all. Genesis 1:28, where it says, And God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and, and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Wow. We can Number five can be thankful because of God's word. God's word. It can heal our wounds. It can comfort us. It can protect us. It can guide and direct us and encourage us. Okay, God's word, the Bible, is not ancient. It's not outdated. It's not old school thinking, right? It exists. Truth and reality that never change. The word is alive and active in our lives as individuals, in our communities, and, and, and throughout generations. It says in uh, Hebrews 4.12, it says, For the world uh, of God is living and active. The word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of the soul and the spirit of the joints and marrow, and discerning the thoughts and the intentions of the heart. So number six, we can be thankful because of fellow Christians, y'all. We can be thankful for our pastors and our friends and, 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 and other people in our church, the body of Christ. God blessed us with relationships. We have our fellow Christians to be thankful for, uh, to, to encourage and, and support us in our walk with Christ. Okay? It says in Hebrews 10, verse 25, it says, And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Hallelujah. And lastly, we can be thankful because we are never alone. If you don't uh, have fellow Christians in your life, if you don't have friends or family that can can be real that can be tough guys and I feel you I was there once in my life I was it's a lonely place to be it is I agree you may feel like you're alone or you're forgotten but you always have God with you he sees you wherever you are and he knows your pain Jesus was alone and he was forsaken to hang on a cross for all of our transgressions but God didn't let him stay there and God won't let you stay there either okay he is for you believe that if you believe nothing else he is for you have I not commanded you be strong and courageous do not be frightened and do not be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. That's what it says in his word. And you know, and sometimes it can feel like we have nothing to be thankful for, but there are so many reasons to give thanks today on this Thanksgiving day and every day to God. Sometimes you just need to start small and just choose to give thanks. Starting small can help you form habits and disciplines that can eventually change your outlook and your attitude. You can start by just being thankful for another day, right? Or simply for the air that you breathe. There's so many reasons to give thanks, y'all. Thanks to God. And I hope that my words today from the Lord remind you that no matter what earthly things you may be missing or wishing you had, you have heavenly blessings that you can always be thankful for, no matter what. Hey, y'all. 
as always, take care of yourselves and others. Jesus loves you, and so do Kelly and I. We love you to the moon and back. Peace out.